Hello everybody. Uh, what I'd like to do is give you a little help with the reliability review. And I have to say that this type of lecture uh, or video lecture is really hard for me to do or feel comfortable with because I really don't have anything specific in mind and what I want to do is walk you through the steps that I think you should go through to uh, do this assignment. Uh, the assignment is very short but you know, it really, if you can do the assignment, that shows that you've learned a lot of other things. And so uh, the process, process of the assignment is important, and I think a lot of students in the past really don't do well with this assignment because of the, you know, the process and the process they have. So I think it's uh, important for me to show you and walk you through. So this is not going to be really, uh, you know, precise, it's going to be Miranda, uh, uh, Mirandering at some times, there'll be jets flying by because I live in Queens, so let's go. Uh, so I wanted to actually delete that out, <laughs> so we'll do it right now because I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, but this assignment is based on a common activity of IO psychologists. As an IO psychologist, you're expected to be able to identify different psychological tests that you could use for employment tests uh, and uh, not only identify them, but evaluate them. And so that's what we're going to be doing on uh, this assignment, evaluating the reliability of a test. You're going to find a test and then evaluate the reliability. Uh, other general advice I have, don't wait until the last minute. Uh, if you went into the last minute, there's two things that you can't do. You can't ask me questions, and then you can't put it aside, wait an uh, hour or so, or, or half a day, and then proofread it. So uh, students are doing a lot of assignments at the last minute. Uh, I would encourage you against that, it's especially since I'm alerting you early on in the semester that this assignment is coming up and this is a major assignment. That's a professor's way of telling you that this is important and you should devote time to it. Uh, the first thing you should do with an assignment is to read the assignment over even before you're going to start to answer it to get a sense of what you need to do. Uh, so here I say uh, let me get my laser pointer. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the reliability review of a test that measures positive and negative contextual performance at work. And specifically, we're going to be looking at OCB, uh, POB, and counterproductive behaviors at work. Also, I'm going to ask you to uh, preclaim. Uh, I don't want everyone to do the same uh, paper and probably what would happen if I didn't do this is that uh, you would all probably share something and for good or for bad uh, that would be the one that everyone does. So I would like to see some variety. Uh, so you need to reserve or preclaim uh, the uh, paper and the scale that you're using. Uh, so uh, notice in the assignment the dates I have for when you can start to preclaim and when you should have that done by. And then look at the assignment itself and take notes and think about what's coming up or what you need to do. First off, I want my pen back now. Uh, I say we're going to practice psych info and research articles. So what that means is that a lot of the work you're going to be doing is on psych info and you're going to be reading research articles. And then I reiterate that we have OCB, POB, and counterproductive work behaviors. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is find a scale that measures one of the one of these uh, you know uh, you know constructs, and to evaluate the reliability uh, of the uh, you know uh, scale. What I'm going to ask you to find is the source, the conceptual definition, the scale characteristics, 
the target population, the reliability data, and then I would like you to evaluate the reliability data. Okay, so in terms of preparing for the assignment without beginning to actually answer the questions, what do I mean by article source? That's very definite. Uh, what do I mean by conceptual definition? You know what that is or should from reading the textbook. Uh, characteristics, I say number of items and examples of uh, items. Target population, general industry, specific industry, language, culture, specific. Reliability data, type of data, Chromeback Alpha, test retest, sample characteristic, who took it, how many. And then finally, evaluate the data. And I tell you specifically what I want. In the video lecture, I gave you rubrics for evaluating reliability. I want you to apply them. Okay, so uh, the writing level is medium stakes. Uh, so these are specific questions, so you can label them one to six along with the question title and uh, answer them like that. You don't need to put them into an essay form or anything like that. So already you've done some work on the assignment without actually answering the assignment. And that's what college assignments are about. And then I finally say, uh, I want you to uh, look at a article that develops or studies the reliability of the scale and not a study that uses the scale in an experiment. And I give you two specific examples, uh, Shen Zhao and Linden. So uh, let's, you should, uh, I have the linked uh, PDFs here. That's a pretty specific uh, suggestion that I suggest you look at them. So why don't we uh, take a look at them? So now I need to figure out how to, oh, I do this. Nope, not that. Yeah, I thought I'd do this. Sorry, new computer, trying to figure out how to get rid of uh, PowerPoint. Discard. Okay, there we go. The hard way, but whatever. All right, so I ask you to take a look at Linden and then also and where would it be? It's going to be right here. Uh, Chen. So here's uh, Chen's article. Uh, so you need to start to think in terms of what I've been teaching you. Journal of Applied Psychology. So psychology is in the title of the journal. What does that mean? It means something critically important that you should know by now. Uh, also, it says here, a research report, which is a good suggestion that it is a research article, uh, but maybe you would like to uh, test that. So how would you test that? You could apply the heuristics, a method section, a result section, and a discussion section. This seems to be like a research article in psychology. Uh, and it's relatively recent, 10 years old, 9 years old. Uh, so it is appropriate to use. You can start to, as the jet comes by, uh, read the article. The title is very important. How does a servant leader fuel the service fire? So this article is going to be about uh, you know, servant leadership and how it will do something that helps with service. Uh, customer service, a multi-level model of servant leadership, identity, group competition climate, and here we go, customer service performance. And then now that we read the title and thought about the title, we're starting to think about, well, what questions we would have about this article. Building on social identity framework, our cross-level process model explains how a manager's servant leadership affects frontline employees service performance. So we're talking about an experiment where the independent variable or the pseudo IV uh, is uh, servant leadership and then the dependent variable is customer service. Uh, and then we can read more about this and 
that's usually what I do to get a good understanding of what an article is. I take a look at the title, I take a look at the abstract, I stop and look at any pictures, and so here they're talking about servant leadership as one variable that affects social identity, that affects customer service, competition climate affects the relationship between social identity and service, and transformative leadership affects social identity and directly affects uh, customer service, and servant leadership directly affects customer service. So I have a pretty good idea about what the experiment is doing. Uh, and I think that really a great, here we go, a great uh, idea to look at is the idea of servant leadership. And so in this experiment, they're using this 16 item scale from Linden on servant, uh, servant leadership. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to uh, probably do my paper on that. So I've gotten to the point where I'm ready to do my paper. Notice all the things I've done so far. I first determined that this is a research article. I've next determined that this is a psychology article. And then I've next determined that it's a reasonably recent article in time. I've read about the article to get a good sense that, you know, what I already assumed is correct, and it is. It's a good experiment. But this is an experiment using Linden's servant leadership measure. It's not on Linden's servant leadership measure. We want to find the article that is going to talk about the construction or the test characteristics, the psychometrics of Linden. So he's using, or they're using, is it a he? Chen, I, th I think that's a he name. Or they are using Linden's. So I'll just click here, go down to Linden. And then I have it here. Oh, this is a different uh, article. Uh, what I did was I looked uh, at that other 2008 article and then decided that this one is a better uh, example of, uh, you know, uh, the article that develops and, uh, you know, validates and sets the reliability of servant leadership. So that's what I do here. And we can see here that this article focused on servant leadership measure that was created by identifying nine dimensions. So they're talking about created. So this is the article where they're creating the scale. So uh, this is a good start. Uh, so uh, leadership quarterly, uh, that is not, doesn't have psychology in the title. Linden is in the Department of Managerial Studies. That's not psychology. So this is a really gray area. However, since we started in a psychology journal and went back to uh, this article here, that really helps us uh, feel confident that this uh, is a uh, psychologically based uh, scale. And then to make sure that this is a Research article, I skipped something. Method section, results section, and there should be a discussion section here someplace, but I'm just not seeing it. Okay, so we have a research article here. Uh, it's a little old, but it's the article that we found from the other study. So that's, uh, you know, going to make us feel confident that we're looking in the right place. Now, I'm talking about servant leadership in ex this example, uh, but you'll notice 
that the assignment is about, let's see, I want this. The assignment is about uh, OCB or POBs or whatever. So let's go and let's find <clears throat> article for this assignment. So I'm going to go down here to library and databases. I'm going to click launch. And hopefully you should know we're looking for psych. Info. I should have read that warning. And so let's take a look for uh, organizational citizenship behavior. When and how does leader humor promote customer-oriented uh, organizational citizenship behavior and hotel employees? Boy, that sounds really interesting. Uh, find it at CUNY. Or first, I should say, it's in tourism management. Oh, not psychology. So, you know, even though in the video I say that we should, not now, we should uh, you know, focus on psychology journals, that'll be a little bit more difficult in organizational behavior because we're in this gray area between psychology and business. So might work, but I'm going to skip that. Abuse of supervision and OCB, a meta-analysis, well, meta-analysis, no. Uh, we want to research study the effect of leader unethical pro-organizational behavior on subordinate uh, silence. Let's see, subjects, ethics and behavior. Behavior, kind of psychologically. Let's go take a look at this. And Sui Chen, do we know or about them. No, unfortunately, that would be too difficult to look up. For now, psychological, you know, mechanism for affecting the relationship between leader unethical pro-organizational behavior. Uh, it's about something totally different, so we're going to skip that. Not in the assignment. And this, of course, seems like a waste of time for us, doesn't it? Like I'm going down blind alleys. Well, I'm doing this just to show you that this is the amount of time and effort you need to put into this part of the assignment. And it is going to be a while for you to find something good. And so uh, one thing I want to point out is that you notice it doesn't appear that we have them here at York. These, these are the most recent. Uh, and two things I want to say about that. Usually the most recent ones, uh, there's an embargo they will not make available online uh, articles that are very, very recent. It'll, it takes about a year or 18 months for them to show up online. That's one thing I wanted to say, so just accept that. Another thing I'd like to say is find it at CUNY is very helpful, kind of helpful. Look, uh, it, I thought this was going to be embargoed. Nope, but it isn't. Wow. So always, it always pays to click Find It at CUNY. All right, so we're going down. This is in Journal of Applied Psychology, Jolted, How Task-Based uh, Jolts Disrupt. I don't see anything about, ah, what I need to do. Organizational citizenship behavior as one concept. Now, here we go. Differential effects of receiving empowering and non-empowering help on recipient gender. Professional commitment matters. Uh, linking employee strength to OCB. Uh, 
Current psychology, okay, there you go. Let's take a look at that. Oh, thank you. This study aimed to examine the mediating role of professional commitment and moderating role of role role of role overload on employing strength. Okay. 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 Looks good. Theory of hypothesis. 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 Sample and data. Method, so we have the psychology journal, recent, and it looks like it's empirical. All right, so, but this is an article that is experimenting and looking at the relationship between organizational citizenship behavior and uh, role overload. It's not a study specifically on OCB, but it is going to use a test of OCB, and we find it in the methods section, measures, professional commitment, OCB, a 10-item scale developed by Barash, 2007. Okay, let's take a look at what this could be. Barash, 2007, Importance of Organizational Citizenship Behavior for Overall Performance Evaluation. Uh, this seems like what they did, and maybe we can go to the article, open a new tab. Okay, yep, here we are. Uh, we have to buy it? Well, not may, really, maybe. So first off, here's a little trick. So I just copy the title. And then I have Google Scholar up here. So I go to a new window, go to Google Scholar. And since I have already linked my Google Scholar account to York College, it will tell me if I have free access via York College. And Let's see if it actually works. No. So I may not have access to this, so I need to go to the next best thing. I usually go to uh, Google Scholar first and then to York. Paste the title in here again. and available online. That's the process you have to go through to wrestle our free articles from uh, CUNY. And yep, it's free and we have the whole thing. Uh, so what they're doing, cross-culture experiment, OCB behavior. So this is another experiment using this OCB measure. But let's keep on going because design of the current series is based on the approach of 2006. Procedure, dependent variable, and looking for, hmm. Nope, this is a dead end because I was expecting that one of the dependent variables would be OCB. And it's in the title so they're talking about OCB. And, hmm, so this is odd. Why is it not? Why does it not measure what it says it's going to measure? So again, this of course seems very sloppy of me. No, it's not. This is just illustrating how difficult it is to work through this part of the assignment. 
Two by Sorry. Model. Blah, 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 blah. I see what they're doing is they're manipulating OCB and not actually uh, measuring it. So that's the problem. So this line of work is, uh, you know, uh, not fruitful. So we have to go back again. What's going on here? Why did this happen? There we go. Linking empowerment, leadership to organizational behavior, citizenship. Uh, and this is in an applied psychology and international review. Now, let's skip that one. And let's see if I, nope, it's still this one. So I have 2,800 hits, so I'm certainly going to find something. And human performance, and eh, wouldn't do that if I were you, because psychology is not in the title. And and so because it was not working out, I decided to uh, jump ahead and find one for you, even though nothing about psychology in there, School of Management, School of Tourism. This is something I would really warn you away from. Uh, unless you have an educated eye like me, which I could see that this is a good quality paper. And so this paper is how they construct uh, the uh, you know, uh, measure of OCB in small tourist locations. Uh, and it would be a good paper to do. The first person that sees this video gets rewarded by possibly doing this as their assignment. And I think that'll be the end of part one. Uh, I'll pick up in part two and show you the mechanics of actually doing the assignment.